Hello and welcome to Rob's Retro Reviews, where today we're continuing on with the Hugo PS2 marathon by taking a look at the third game released for the system, Agent Hugo. If you're interested in watching any of the older videos in this Hugo marathon, then I'll link them down below. But for now, this marks a particularly interesting point in the Hugo franchise, because it's the start of a sort of reboot that the series went through. But the question is, after a reboot, can Hugo finally have a game that's good? Agent Hugo is another difficult game in the series to really define. It's partially an open world driving game, and it's also somewhat of a stealth game too. For the vast majority of the game, you'll be driving around in a boat, exploring a city while completing missions given to you by a secret agency known as Risk. These missions mostly just consist of simply driving to an objective marker, but they do sometimes offer some more content than that. Throughout the story, you'll be avoiding mines, doing chase sequences, and taking part in boat-on-boat -boat combat. But then in certain missions, Hugo will get out of his boat and walk around on foot. These sections result in an instant failure if you're spotted, so the objective is always to make it to an objective marker without getting seen. Sometimes there'll be things in the way, like a big metal container in the dock level, or these electronically locked doors. And to get past them, you'll need to find hidden switches, so there's a slight element of exploration too. But I think we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here. What actually happens to Hugo to make him into a secret agent, anyway? Well, I don't know. When you first start the game, it literally just begins. There's no introduction cutscene which sets up the world or its characters to us, or anything. We just start driving and get on with it. This is a serious problem with the game for me, to be honest. With this being somewhat of a reboot, it's confusing as to what elements from the previous games are still canon. And even if all of the previous game's stories and characters are disregarded here, the new ones aren't introduced to us. So either way, if you're a new player or a long-time Hugo fan, you won't have a clue what's going on. This lack of an introduction caused me to have a real disconnect from the game's story from the outset. And this had a domino effect, and I basically ended up not caring about anything that happened in the game, because there were no stakes put across to me. The introduction for this game should have shown Hugo in his forest from the previous games, getting contacted by Risk, and then going to the city to be briefed about what's going on. Then we would have had time to get familiar with both Hugo as a character, and our overall objective for the game, and we could have also been introduced to all the new characters too. But as it stands, this is just an awful start for the game. What I will say though, is that the theme song for Agent Hugo is actually pretty damn good. It's probably the best produced thing in this entire game. Watch out, hands up on the ground, where the b-boys looking for the Hugo sound, where the guys with the mission to establish a condition where the beat's gonna drive you mad. Agent Hugo, he's the man, he's the troll undercover with a master plan. Thrills Miss Honey Bunny, Miss Honey Bunny, dismiss Honey Bunny, here he comes. So basically, we eventually learn that the story of the game involves stopping a criminal organisation called Suspectra, who are led by a new bad guy to the series called Dr. Nogo, who turns out to be a big frog in a suit, which is nice I guess. Suspectra's plan is to add a chemical into the water that runs through the city, so that it floods and everything is destroyed. And the motive for this utterly evil plan is so that Dr. Nogo can get back at the boss of Risk, Miss All Too Bright, after she broke up with him because he turned evil. I guess with him being a frog, it wouldn't really matter that the city is flooded, so he could still stay there while everyone else would have to leave, or have drowned to death. What Dr. Nogo will do after the city is flooded isn't actually ever said to us, so that's just speculation on my part. I guess he just didn't think that far down the line. It's almost like he expected his evil plan to be stopped. The overall story is okay, it's really nothing special, but it gets the job done and gives Hugo an excuse to go on his missions and give them some context, and I guess that's really all you could ask for. However, the way this story is actually put across to us is where the big problems with this game begin. The general cutscene quality is awful. The animations are poor and just repeat over and over again while characters talk, which I found particularly awful during these weird electrocution sections. Jesse me, I am sick and tired of this ridiculous troll. And there's constantly this issue where characters disappear or go into weird poses just as the camera angle changes for a single frame. 
but I found it really noticeable and distracting. Then on top of all of this, there's this stupid issue with the voice acting where there's really long awkward gaps between every single line of dialogue spoken in the game. It just destroys the flow of cutscenes completely. Agent Hugo, your next mission is so top secret that you are forbidden to even mention it to other risk agents. Okay. Suspectra is obviously plotting against us. There's also major problems with the audio balancing in this game as a whole, but it's even an issue in the cutscenes too. With one line of speech being a normal volume, and then the very next line spoken by the same character sometimes being a totally different level of volume. It's ridiculous and it happens all the time. He sounds exactly the same as when I knew him. I've intercepted a message. Changeover of sodium chloride today. 1500 hours down at the harbour. You've probably noticed too that there's a horrible buzzing in the background, which could in theory be a problem with the way I recorded this game's footage. But at the same time, I don't think it is, because none of the other PS2 games I've reviewed have done this to this extent, and plus, it's not there during the normal gameplay. So yeah, that's just awful. The voice acting itself is kinda difficult to judge, because with all of these other problems on top of the actual voice work, it's difficult to listen to the acting for what it is. Some characters' voices seem to be okay, like Hugo's, but there was obviously a clear lack of direction given to the actors when they were recording the lines, because sometimes they just don't connect with each other in a way that it would in a normal conversation. I assume the reason for this is that the voice actors recorded the lines separately from each other, so they didn't have the other actor's line to respond to. And this is an issue with pretty much every game that records its voice acting like this. I expect you all to give him a warm welcome to Risk. Say hello to... The name's Hugo. Agent Hugo. But it's a troll. Yes, he looks like one. Welcome, I'm Honey Bunny. So yeah, there's a huge amount of issues with this game's story and the way that it's presented to us, but for now, let's try and move past that and talk about the actual gameplay, shall we? As I said before, the game is split into two different playstyles, with the main one being the boat gameplay, and then the secondary one being the on-foot stealth sections. The boat gameplay is laid out almost like an open world. You have a mini-map in the bottom right of the screen, and you follow markers on there to find missions to take part in. You can also find optional challenges, garages to swap your vehicle, and tunnels to other sections of the city on there too. The optional challenges consist of races, where you're timed and given a medal depending on how fast you complete the course, and bomb runs, where you race around a certain area of the city picking up bombs and bringing them back to the disposal area. It's nice that the game gives you these optional missions and would give you an excuse to keep playing the game after you've finished the story, but the thing is, I don't think they really do anything and they're just there so that you can show off your best times which obviously no one is going to care about, so for the most part I did just ignore these. Plus, judging from the completion screen, there's hardly any of these optional missions in the game, so it wouldn't even take long to do them, so it's not like it would add that much game time on even if I did do them. The garages you go to to swap your vehicle only rarely ever come in handy when you need a specific vehicle for a mission. So there's two points in the game where you'll need either a truck to drive through some big doors, or a more discreet vehicle to blend in with the citizens. But other than those two very specific points in the game, the garages are quite useless. Despite me calling this game's level design open world, that's not exactly true. It's more so laid out like a series of hallways that all split off from each other and then reconnect later down the line that you're free to explore as you wish. So if you were to consider it an open world, it would be a very closed off one. I do think that there's potential in the idea of an open world game like this, but the problem is, other games coming out at the same time as this one were already doing this, and doing it much, much better. Obviously Grand Theft Auto 3 was the big one that really popularised the idea of open world games, but then there's games like Jack 2 or Sly 2, which showed that a similar level design could work in a more kid-friendly platformer game. Agent Hugo, when compared with these other games, just feels very dated and lacklustre, but I do see what they were trying to do. 
I think the issue is, is that they were just too ambitious and didn't have the money or talent to pull something of the same scale as the previously mentioned games off. Agent Hugo, despite having some missions which mix things up, just feels like you're endlessly driving around in circles going from one marker to another. And while that's fundamentally what you do in Grand Theft Auto 3 and similar games, in those examples you go to an objective marker and then actually do something fun and worthwhile. Rather than like an Agent Hugo where you drive to a marker and then basically just drive to the next one. The other gameplay style of Agent Hugo is even worse than the boat sections. The general movement of Hugo feels clunky and it's almost like he snaps into set positions rather than controlling him smoothly. The awkward animations when Hugo moves doesn't help with this either. I feel like because these bits aren't the main part of the game, ITE Media didn't put that much effort into them, and it shows. But even throwing the clunky controls out of the picture, these areas are still absolutely awful. Every single area of the game in this playstyle is exactly the same. You simply walk from one end of the level to the other, and sometimes there's huge sections where there's literally no resistance. There's no enemies or anything, and it's just jaw-droppingly boring. But then, even when there are enemies, literally all you do is throw out a bomb ball, detonate it on the enemy, and then run past. And that works for every single enemy in the whole game. There's just nothing to the gameplay here, and it feels like they were just trying to pad out the game with these sections, because the game is insanely short. Seriously, it took me around three hours to finish, and that's with doing some of the side stuff, taking notes for this review, and failing quite a lot on a later level. But I'll get to that later. The thing is, they have these mechanics like a meter that fills up when enemies get more suspicious, and a disguise system where you can in theory hide from enemies in plain sight, but because the game is so bare bones and easy, I literally didn't need to use a disguise or even glance at the suspicion meter at all. Agent Hugo has a severe case of bad level design, which basically just allows you to walk around enemies without even interacting with them. And even when you do interact with them, it's just to throw a bomb at them and then walk past. It's rubbish. You know what else really annoyed me throughout my time playing Agent Hugo? For some reason, the controller would constantly turn analog mode off, and I would always need to be turning it back on again. Now, this isn't a problem with the controller either, because it doesn't do this with any other game, it's just Agent Hugo. So what in God's name is going on with that? As I've already mentioned, the audio design in this game is completely screwed up, with it having balance issues with voices during the cutscenes. But it's worse than that. Sometimes certain bits of audio will just cut out and decide they don't want to work. The main example of when this happened to me was when I was driving around and my boat's engine just stopped making noise for ages. So let's race! But then there's also things like dialogue lines constantly cutting out. Like Hugo is supposed to quip about something, but he just cuts out instantly. And this happens literally every couple of minutes at least. And on top of all of this, the music is constantly changing when there's no reason for it to, and then it doesn't change when it feels like it should. So here we have an example of some tense music playing just because a gate's opened. And here a chase sequence is supposed to have started, but the music is still acting as if we're supposed to be being stealthy. Agent Hugo, follow your GPS and get out quickly. All of Suspectra is on your heels.
Hey-ya! It's great being an agent. The entire game is just littered with problems, and it's probably the worst produced game I've ever played that's been officially released on a console like this. Even if it wasn't for all of these major issues, the balance between the sound effects and the music is completely off, and the music itself isn't varied enough either. I swear there's basically three tracks in the whole game. One for when you're driving around, one for chases and combat, and one for stealth. If there's more than that, I couldn't tell the difference because it all sounded the same. I literally can't do it justice just how badly put together this game is. I would be here all day if I was to list every single issue I encountered with it, so I guess I'll just say that this game was in need of way better production to balance out the developer's ambition. For the most part, the game is an absolute cakewalk. There wasn't a single level of the game that caused me any trouble whatsoever. Well, aside from this one bit where these bombs kept glitching and flying around even though they're supposed to float on the water. But then we come to one of the last levels of the game where you have to go through this sewer section. The gimmick here is that you need to activate loads of switches and backtrack through the level to find unlocked doors. Already it's bloody annoying because you're just getting lost and it's taking ages to find anything, but then later in the level, loads of enemies spawn in and objective markers appear indicating that you need to kill them all. Now, the combat in this game is just utter crap. You just point in the direction of the enemy and shoot until they blow up. You do have a second weapon in the form of a rocket launcher, but because the enemies are always moving, it's practically worthless and just misses all the time. So the issue here is that you're either in a situation where the enemy AI is confused and just constantly drives around you in a circle because it's trying to point at you, but the turning circle doesn't allow them to, but then your turning circle is also really slow, so it takes ages to be able to point yourself at them too, or alternatively you and your enemy are both looking at each other and you just have to tank through the damage to be able to hit them. So with there being so many enemies in this area, it's inevitable that you're gonna die. Because even if you get an enemy to drive around you so you can slowly twist your boat to shoot them, another enemy will just appear and shoot you as you're stupidly twisting around. Just to make things even more annoying though, there's no checkpoints in this entire level and it takes ages to even get to the point where the enemies spawn. So when you die, you've wasted upwards of 20 minutes of your time. I was stuck on this one level for more than an hour, just repeating this same section over and over again, and guess what I found out? You don't even need to kill the enemies. You can just drive past and go to the next switch and carry on. But this isn't stated to us. In fact, the exact opposite is implied because the enemies all have objective markers on them. So this area of the game really just seems to exist to piss you off. Something that I originally wasn't going to mention in this review because it might be a sensitive topic is this game's racist tendencies. Like, it's one thing having very stereotypical voice acting for certain characters. Hey! I've received a report from Mocha, the troll headed for Professor Grafenfennig! Max Schmertz, can you take care of him? Will you ensure that he has a little accident? Ah, my boss. I will quickly remove the Kleiner problem with a bomb! <laughs> but then there's also the fact that Hugo can literally black up as one of his disguises, and not only does he start talking jive, but he can also run faster like this too. What's up, honey? Do I look good or what? That suit is just wicked, man. Cool. Looks like it's been painted on. Watch out, Daddy Hugo is in the house. Yeah, man, I like this suit. Yeah, I'm too cool for this place. I mean, it's not like this game was released ages ago, not that that would be an excuse anyway, but come on, this game was released in 2005. We should have been way past this sort of thing by that point. Anyway, the last bit of the game just involves you chasing down the main bad guy and blowing his boat up, which was the only part of the entire thing where the rocket launcher actually came in handy. For the last boss, if you were even to call it that, it's extremely underwhelming. So, after all of this rubbish, Hugo is successful in saving the city and gains the respect of the other agents working at risk, and it's implied that he has a bit of a thing with one of the female agents called Miss Honeybunny. 
so let's hope Hugolina doesn't hear about that. We also get an implication that a sequel is coming because Dr. Nogo says he'll be back with a more evil plan at some point. Jeez, I did not expect this. I think I've ended all of these Hugo PS2 videos by saying pretty much the same thing, but I went into this particular one with slightly higher expectations with it being a reboot and a different direction for the series, and to be honest, a part of the reason my hopes were high is because I did think this was going to be a 3D platformer. But, I've got to say, this is the worst Hugo PS2 game yet. I'm giving Agent Hugo a 1 out of 10. The only reason I feel like it even deserves a 1 is because I feel like there's something there in the core idea. They attempted to add a reason to explore with the side objectives. There's an attempt at variety with some unique objectives within the normal missions. And to be honest, the graphics are okay too. In fact, with this boat, there's a nice attention to detail where when you turn, only one of the jets will activate, so it actually makes sense. Even though a lot of the main missions just take place in a city, the weather and lighting is slightly different in each area, which stops it looking too samey, which is a nice touch. The controls for the main boats are also okay too. It doesn't feel amazing or anything, but it's not too slow and it's quite smooth. That is, apart from when you're using the truck. That section of the game is ridiculously tedious. However, even though all of that sounds good, and you would think based on that that the game deserves better than a 1, I just feel like literally almost every other aspect of the game is awful, and it completely ruins the whole thing. It's like trying to give a child praise because they've drawn a really bad picture but put a lot of effort in, and the picture is made of poo, and it's all over your living room wall. I mean, you just can't praise that kind of behaviour, even if they did put some effort in. There's audio issues up the wazoo, the controller turns analog mode off all the time, the cutscenes have no creativity, there's awkward pauses after every single line of dialogue, the animations in cutscenes and in the game are awful, and the music is mediocre and doesn't fit with what's going on. Not to mention that the game's boring, and it can't even keep you invested in its story because of all the glitches and the terrible non-existent introduction to the game's universe. The loading times are way too frequent and long too. I've not even mentioned some stuff like that because of how long it would take me to go through everything. There's too many problems to even properly summarise how bad this game is, and I just feel very disappointed in it all. All hope isn't lost though because there's another three goddamn Agent Hugo games still left to cover. How the hell this reboot got three more games after this rubbish, I have no idea. But either way, next time in the Hugo PS2 Marathon, we'll be taking a look at Agent Hugo Robo Rumble. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and leave a comment letting me know if you've played Agent Hugo or not, and what you think to it. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, subscribe for more content like this coming soon. And until next time... Bye!